It's the Eagle Community Television Forum with your host, Gary Shorman. Hi everyone, I'm Gary Shorman and this is the Forum on Eagle Community Television. The Forum's brought to you by Hayes Med. Good to have you watching because we're going to be talking about a subject that has a lot of discussion, not only here but at other universities around the state, and that has to do with guns on campus. And our guest is Dr. Gary Brinker, and, and he's the director of the Docking Institute at Fort Hayes State University. They've done some survey work on that. But before we get into the details, there may be people out there that don't know about the Docking Institute. Tell us a little bit about the Docking Institute and why it's a part of Fort Hayes State University. Okay, I'd love to. Uh, the Docking Institute is a social research center that's been around for about 35 years now. I'm the most recent director. I've been uh, running the uh, show for about seven years now. And what the Docking Institute, there, our mission is to assist nonprofits who have programs to help people, as well as government entities, state government entities. And we do this by providing them with cutting edge research services at highly competitive prices. And we're very proud of the work that we do. When you talk about research, what exactly, so many times you're at home, you hear your phone ring, you're I'm not doing another survey. Is that the type of work you do or is it more broad than that? We do a lot of surveys. We have a very large telephone survey center uh, where we do telephone surveys and we also do a lot of, actually this study that we're going to discuss today was done with our internet software. Uh, and basically we emailed these invitations to participate to the faculty and staff of the Regents Universities and they responded through an online survey and we got the data and prepared the report that way. So uh, we do surveys, um, you know, we do labor studies for communities, uh, economic developers, uh, we do strategic planning, uh, we do some training. We actually have a program where we train the uh, state treasurers who um, get elected to office and we have special training that, that kind of prepares them how to do the job. So it's really a wide variety of services and it's very easy to find our website uh, where you can look at everything that we do. When you look at uh, seven years as director, how have things changed in that seven years? Because if you subtract seven years off of 16, that'd be you took over in 2009? Eight, eight, nine, 2008, eight, nine. Uh, fall of 2008. And uh, obviously some real change in not only our economy and our world, but how's it changed yes. when you're doing survey work like the one year we're gonna be talking about? Yes, well certainly the economy has changed. And I guess for me, um, when I moved here, Kansas had the impression of being a, a moderate state and that really appealed to me. And that's why um, it, it, it's a little distressing for me to kind of see the, the politics swing, try to swing toward, toward the extreme. I think that's probably the, the most disturbing uh, change that I've seen. I mean, that's just my personal preference for moderate politics, but in a country as diverse as us or a state as diverse as Kansas, it just seems like you, you have to, everybody has to compromise and, and come to the middle for government to really work. When you take a look at the survey we're going to talk about, and that's guns on campus, you know, that does, that does create a certain political side, one left Absolutely. and one right for doing that. Uh, are many of your surveys in the political realm? Absolutely. Our, you know, we, one of the main uh, ways we uh, approach our public affairs mission is through uh, a statewide uh, public opinion survey called Kansas Speaks, which I hope at least many of your audience uh, mm -hmm. members are familiar with, but we do this annually and it's, we, we poll all adult Kansans and we ask mostly about the political issues of the time. And you know, one of the things that, that Kansas Speaks has shown almost consistently from when we started it in 2009 is a pretty wide discrepancy between what our survey shows Kansans want from their government and what they're getting. And I think there's no better example of that than our, our gun survey that we're going to talk about. Well, the gun survey, let's go there because recently, and this has just been in kind of an ongoing building process that's going to allow guns on campus. Tell us about that ruling specifically, how it deals with the campuses itself, and then the questions that went into to find out why. Well, first of all, it, it, gun policy in Kansas is, it doesn't seem complicated, but it does seem like there's a little bit of um, um, unclarity on, on at least some subtle nuances of the gun policy, such as, for example, open carry. Um, 
And, but my understanding is that the current policy, the current change is that guns are now going to be allowed within the buildings on campus, at least concealed carry, I should say. That is the big change that's coming up. Right now, you cannot conceal carry inside the buildings. I know of Fort A. State, and I, I assume of all the other universities, uh, because there was, as, as you may know, there was an exemption from that law that's going to expire mm -hmm. uh, a week from, or a year from July, in July of, of 2017. So the big debate now is should, gun, should concealed carry be allowed within the buildings on campus? And the option is for the schools to put in some sort of protection, i.e. some sort of uh, screening device that's correct. Uh, at each building, which is crazy expensive to figure out how to do that as well on the other side, correct? I think most uh, administrators, if it looked at that, have, have said that's not going to be feasible, both economically and as well as to facilitate, you know, rapid change in classes. Um, but you're right. At July of, t of 2017, the universities, uh, the Regents universities are either going to have to allow concealed carry in the buildings or they're going to have to install screening equipment at every door. Uh, to screen and in other words they want to make sure if we're going to forbid guns in the buildings people that conceal carry need to be reassured somehow that there's not going to be any guns in there and they're not going to have to defend themselves from someone with a gun in there that's the way I read it so that that being said and that's the way I understand it as well so that being said what's the mission of the survey what were you trying to find out in the survey and and how did you determine what the questions would be um, the purpose of the survey was simply to determine what the opinions, first of students, they were the first ones that approached us. When the faculty senates found out the students were doing a survey, they quickly told us that they wanted to also do a similar survey. Um, so the purpose of it is to show the KBOR, the board of directors of KBOR and the Kansas legislature exactly how the students and staff and faculty feel about campus gun policy and what their preferences would be. We're going to look at some of the specific details uh, with part of your team here in a little bit when we come back from our break. But as an overview, what did you learn from the survey? Well, a couple of things. Uh, I did learned people like to participate in it? I mean, did you get great response, good response, did. average response? We did. On an internet survey, the biggest I've seen before this one is maybe 20, 25 percent at the most. The students were over 50% and the faculty were t about 10% 10, 10 more. So Of those in people that you invited to participate? Well, we invited everybody. Okay. Now, there was one or two schools that opted to go with a sample because they don't like to inundate their, their, their people with surveys. So, what was it? Wichita State, I believe, uh, drew a sample. Um, but most of the schools, everybody got an opportunity to participate. So, knowing there was a good response, then what did you learn from the good response? From an overview from your chair as a director, and then uh -huh. we'll dive into maybe some of the details of that. Okay, uh, just as an overview, one of, the, one of the things that I noticed was that the faculty and staff tended to be, have a, a slightly higher level of opposition than the students did. And it was also interesting, the diversity between schools. We found that on almost all the indicators, Fort Hay State and Pittsburgh State were the two schools that tended to consistently be in favor of guns on campus, relatively speaking. And KU and KU Med School uh, were the two that consistently came out opposed to guns on campus. Um, so there was, it was, um, you know, those two things I think were, the, were, the, were kind of the things that uh, I didn't expect. Who developed the questions? Did your team develop that or did that come from some of the students and, and some of the research you did? You know, I worked, with, I worked with Ryan, who, who your audience will meet in a minute, uh, mm -hmm. and we kind of brainstormed what we thought were the, were the questions that, that were relevant. And, and then we sent that to the, to the uh, student council, our student government presidents, and they, I think maybe they, they cut a few out and maybe requested some changes, a little bit of changes, and I think maybe they suggested a couple of questions. So it was an interactive process between us and uh, the sponsors of the study, which was the student government presidents. Did you have any surprises? Surprises? Um, I, not really. Um, I, I sort of anticipated that that would be higher opposition than, than in the general pop population simply because this issue is much more relevant uh, for this population. Um, you know, you're not going to be killed by uh, um, a gun on campus unless you actually spend time on, on campus. campus. 
And so these were people that spend a considerable amount of time on campus. And you have somebody who's going to come and talk, tell us about who's going to talk about uh, the real facts and figures. And when we dive into a few of the details in a few minutes, tell me about I this I am. I'm man. anxious for you to meet Ryan Swain, who has been with the Docking Institute for a couple of years now. And he's actually our, our head uh, student researcher. Uh, and, and Ryan has just learned a whole lot while he's here. He's interested in art. I'm trying to get him to uh, change his career direction to social <laughs> science, but uh, I think probably that's futile. But he's a very talented young man, and he, he's got some, some skills in, in many different areas. We'll bring Ryan on after the break here. Dr. Brinker, thanks for being a part of the thanks program here. Thanks for having here. us. Thanks and we'll talk me. more about the specifics of guns and schools, specifically universities. Back with more after this. It's a beautiful day in our super high-speed internet, great customer service neighborhood. Like you, this is where we live. In fact, our company is employee-owned, so it's our goal to improve the quality of life for everyone in our community by delivering faster, more reliable internet, clearer, more feature-laden phone service, quality TV channels, all with the level of customer service you'd expect from people who are your neighbors. Eagle Communications, our community connected. Welcome back to the second half of our forum. We're talking about guns on college campuses. And it's interesting that some of the research has been done by the Docking Institute. We've had Dr. Gary Brinker, who was talking about the Docking Institute and how they sort of developed this survey. We have with us now Ryan Swain. Programs brought to you by Hayes Med and by Eagle Communications. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, ideas, be sure and send them to me. My email address is gary.shorman at eaglecom.net. Again, Ryan Swain is over here to my right, your left. And Ryan, you were part of this whole survey process, but before you got into this process, how'd you get to be a part of the Docking Institute? Well, um, I started with the Docking Institute in 2013. Um, and when I signed on, I had no idea what I was getting involved in. I started out- uh, doing Seemed like a good idea at it, the time. It did, right I, I did some basic data entry and then uh, eventually got involved with some of these projects. And now I'm the, uh, the student research supervisor for the Docking Institute and uh, so working on a little bit bigger stuff. Now, when you do that and, and you pull some of these things, has that been sort of changed your mind about what you want to do long term? Um, you know, it has. Uh, it, Dr. Brinker convinced me to take a couple of uh, sociology classes, and I have. Uh, and while I enjoyed those, um, I really enjoy art, so I think I'm going to stick with that long term. Now, if we can do some surveys on art, you'll be in business, right? There we go. All right, this survey has to do with gun control on campus, as we talked about earlier. A year from now, in July of 2017, guns will be allowed on campuses in buildings with a concealed carry permit, unless the universities come up with some sort of uh, metal detection device in each building, and which doesn't seem to be going to happen. So you ask yeah. surveys, you have the questions and the detail, and that's quite a document you have. Let's pick out a <laughs> few of them. Give me the questions and then the response on some of the key questions. That okay, you have. sure. Well, um, overall, the majority of the respondents favored prohibiting guns on campus in all buildings and at all events. Um, and this is across the state of Kansas? Across the state of Kansas, that's correct. Okay, so what is the first question? Well, um, faculty and staff were asked how seeing a, scre a screening station as they enter a university facility would affect their sense of safety. And we had 45% of them that said it would make them feel less safe. Interesting. Was that a surprise to you? You know, it was. Um, I, I assumed that uh, it, it would make them feel more safe, whether they were pro-gun or um, against guns. Uh, either way, I would have thought that would have increased their feelings of safety. That's kind of interesting. What else did you find out? Well, um, the, the biggest one was the, the requiring a permit. So recently, Kansas has passed a law where you no longer need a permit to carry a concealed handgun as long as you can legally own one. In anywhere in the state anywhere where guns are state. permitted, correct? That's correct. And so we found that 90% of faculty favor requiring a permit. Um, and I don't have the specific number for students, but their responses were very similar. So when you're looking at that, uh, the response would be, if we're going to have guns in university buildings, they, the majority would like to have at least a permit That's and, and training to go along with that. What about across the different campuses? Did you notice, because uh, Dr. Brinker talked about KU and KU uh, Medical Center mm -hmm. maybe being a little bit different. What else did you see in the different schools? Well, um, I did notice in the student survey that um, 
some of the more urban schools tended to have a decreased feeling of safety as compared to the rural schools. Um, for example, I think that Wichita State University uh, felt the most unsafe, while, for example, Fort Hayes and Emporia had the highest feelings of safety. You know, one of the things, and, and you're a college student, so you are on campus a lot, mm -hmm. and, and you see these things that have happened on other college university campus. Do you feel unsafe at Fort Hayes? You know, I don't. I think Hayes is a really safe campus. Um, you know, I've been here for about four years now, and I love it, um, but I've never felt unsafe walking around campus, even at night. Now, if you were at another school in Kansas, or maybe a bigger school in a, in a maybe a part of a community or a big town where it wasn't quite as safe? Would that change that maybe? You know, I'm not sure. I'd have to be in that position. Find out. All right, give me a couple other questions here. And, and uh, I know there's some other ways to find out the results of this research as, as we go, because I know some of that's going to become available. What other questions were of interest? On well, that? sure. Um, well, we asked respondents uh, what their confidence was in their campus police or security forces abilities to complete certain tasks. Um, so one of them was, uh, we asked their confidence in their campus police's ability to maintain a safe environment. Um, and we found out that 68% were at least somewhat confident. Um, so that was our highest one. But uh, it was interesting that the, the indicator with the lowest level of confidence was with their abilities to enforce a gun-free policy. Um, and on that, there was less than half, only 46% that were at least somewhat confident. That is an interesting standpoint, especially on concealed carry as to who has what type of things. Did this only deal with guns or did it deal with any other types of weapons? Yes, just guns. Just guns. Mm -hmm. All right, one more question. What's another question that kind of it was a little bit interesting when well, it came Well, this one, the um, it, it kind of worries me a little bit. Now, I, I don't have the breakdown by school, but overall, 51% um, of faculty said they would be less likely to work at their university if concealed carry were allowed. 51% less likely to work at their university if there was concealed carry. That's correct. Interesting stats to go along with that. Where will these be published? Where can people find more information on this? Well, this report is available right now on the Docking Institute's website. So you can go on the website as part of Fort Hayes State's website, that correct? That's correct. And find out the results to this. If you have any questions or ideas, I assume they can call you guys at the Docking Institute as well? Yes, they can. They'll find you or somewhere, find Dr. Brinker and get you to the right folks. Thanks for joining us, Ryan. Thanks for having us. Ryan Swain has been our student guest here as part of the Docking Institute as we talk about guns on campus, not only Fort Hayes State, but across the state of Kansas. Thanks for watching the forum program. It's brought to you by Hayes Med and by Eagle Communications, our community connected. Hayes Med is your first and best choice for health care. They're the only facility providing tertiary level services in this region. With more than 70 physicians and 26 specialties, ranging from heart, orthopedic, spine care, cancer, obstetrics and gynecology, wound care, rehabilitation and surgery, including the Da Vinci robotic surgery, Hayes Med is your comprehensive health provider for people throughout Western Kansas. Hayes Med, helping people be healthy.